Hey guys, Rex here. I am going to rattle can this beautiful carbon fiber rifle barrel from Helix 6. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Carbon fiber, very cool material. Very light, very strong, has very unique thermal properties. Uh, some of those thermal properties, particularly in the direction that the thermal conductivity uh, goes, are misunderstood sometimes because that thermal conductivity is not in every direction like a uniform material like steel, um, but it'll travel longitudinally down the fiber of the carbon part. Uh, there are resins in here too that are of different uh, material, you know, different uh, conductivity values, all that kind of stuff. So anytime you have a matrix of material that is constructed from different things, you have a variety of um, issues that make it a little more complex than just a monolithic material. That being said, carbon fiber has been utilized for a long time now. Uh, very, very good stuff for bicycle frames, uh, you know, stuff that you want to be lightweight, that rifle stocks, even a barrel... This is carbon fiber here. We have, of course, a steel core, uh, the liner for the bore on the inside. But then you can have the benefits, some of the benefits of a large diameter barrel. It's stiff, uh, but it's still lightweight. Um, people talk about the thermal dissipation of carbon fiber. I disagree with some of the conclusions people have there. You can't just read the data sheet on the material. Um, at a glance, you have to understand how and what direction it's going. So it depends on how it's wound. Now, the, the Helix 6 barrel here is a little bit different methodology than some of the other big companies. I've seen uh, carbon fiber barrels unravel, uh, like you would see a fiberglass arrow unravel. I don't know if you've ever done archery and you have fiberglass arrows. They'd get a micro fracture and then all of a sudden they'd shatter. Uh, I've seen that happen with Magnum rifles. So I have um, some hesitations using carbon fiber uh, for inappropriate applications like uh, deep sea submarines to visit the Titanic, um, magnums, things like that, where stress fractures build up and tiny, tiny uh, compromises in the material matrix can cause a problem. All that being said, carbon fiber is awesome if utilized in the right setting for the right application, not pushing the envelopes. This is a 243 Winchester. This is totally, totally more than adequate um, uh, material carbon fiber for that cartridge. It's not like a radical um, cartridge, you know, um, with magnum pressures and the same kind of whiplash and shockwave. Uh, but I've seen magnums unravel. And sometimes you won't even see it. Um, you'll have to hold it up in the sun and then feel very smooth and soft. And all of a sudden you get snag, you get a little sliver. And then you can twist on the barrel just a little bit and whoa, the crack will open up. And you'll see, I, I've seen them come unwound helically um, at the ELR class, the RX3000 ELR. I'm not going to say what brand, okay? Um, but that's maybe a reason why even those companies that build those gosh darn things will run a solid steel barrel on their shooting team, okay? Because uh, the reliability. However, I like lightweight for... Applications such as this rifle is for. This is a, a precision rifle that I use specifically um, for long range. That this rifle's 90% is in between seven and 900 yards. That's what this rifle is for. I use it in the yard. I have a uh, vermin problem that uh, has a very high traffic area about that distance from where it's comfortable for me to sit. So that's what this rifle is for, okay? for specific kind of vermin that uh, want to destroy my stuff and kill my animals. And so what are we going to do here? We are going to actually finally marry this optic to this rifle and this tripod. We're going to paint this rifle. We're going to paint it. We're going to rattle can it with a rattle can, okay? We're going to rattle can this beautiful carbon fiber Helix 6 
custom rifle with this. We're going to rattle can the optic, the rings, the mounts, these beautiful Arkin titanium rings, this beautiful EP5, uh, this beautiful, uh, I don't even know what kind of tripod it is. What is this thing? One of those STP, don't, oh, ST, no, wait, Siru, Siru E. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to paint that. It's just, an you know, it's not like a premium uh, tripod, but it, it works nice. It's a tri, it, it uh, lights tighten up nice. What more can you ask, right? Um, so for me, this is like a low budget, high performance kind of system, okay? Because I'm all about low budget and high performance. So this rifle was relatively affordable. Um, the optic is in incredibly affordable. The chassis is incredibly affordable. And the, the bipod ain't, or the tripod here is not terribly unaffordable either, okay? So that being said, we're gonna rattle can it. Why? Well, a number of reasons uh, for the metallic components. We do have steel here. We do have a steel uh, base. We do have components that can corrode and rust. So I don't want my steel components to start to corrode or rust. So for rust inhibition, but also carbon fiber has some very positive properties. However, for use in like uh, avionics and aircraft, uh, they will tell you there's a lot of planes that utilize carbon fiber parts. Uh, the, the matrix, the poly resin carbon fiber matrix, um, that is, there's a lot of the, the resin that's exposed on um, when they shape this and surface it down. So it's not just carbon, but the resin is, in fact, somewhat sensitive to UV light and can degrade it to where stuff will start to feather out and start to unravel and it will compromise the matrix, okay? So you get one weak spot in here, stuff can unravel, that's not good. It's really a fabric, if you think about it, right? Carbon fiber in, in a way, right? That's wrapped and solidified, very, very, very cool stuff. But like if you look at bicycle frames, high-end bicycle frames that are made out of carbon fiber, they get a lot of outdoor use. They paint stuff like that a lot of times, okay? And airplanes, definitely, they like to paint them so that it actually um, adds to the sustain part of the equation for the system, okay? Now, I know it's pretty. Guys have a hard time, you know, gosh darn, painting something that's so beautiful, right? Because it is pretty. It looks cool. It's indicative of value. It's, um, I don't know, you know, it has that image that guys strive for, whatever, right? I understand, okay? But like functionally, this needs to be painted, okay? For my use, this is gonna be for outdoor use. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to rattle cam this thing, okay? Any place that can see the light of day is gonna get a rattle cam. That'll prevent this from unraveling. Also, there's a number of other things that can happen with the barrel coming into contact with sharp objects, stuff like that. I don't want to give it an excuse to start any kind of process. You got to think of the supersonic shockwave too, of this thing going off and the entire barrel as that bullet's being pushed down there in the blink of an eye, in a, in a fraction of a, a second, stuff is flexing super, super, super quick. And a huge amount of the heat generated and even in an all steel barrel comes from the like immediate flexing of everything in the system. Like the, like if you take a piece of any material and bend it back and forth and cause it to move and bend it, spring, whatever, right? It'll heat up. And so you have a big part of the, the bore temperature of a rifle coming from the actual flexion of the bore and, and the barrel. Um, so uh, that's another factor as well here, okay? So there's a lot of that uh, flexion going on. So carbon fiber is in a barrel is actually subject to a lot of different kinds of shock forces that are, you know, honestly beyond its original design. Certain things like like steel or whatever are much more defined materials. Um, well, I mean, the submarine guy proved that, right? You have, there's certain stuff that's not meant for radical environments unless it can be continuously uh, inspected with proper equipment that's beyond the capability of anyone shooting a rifle and plus it's inherently hazardous man to um take a gamble on stuff like that and plus i mean this thing sits out in the hot sun it is colored black it's going to absorb a lot of light and that uv radiation is going to take its toll on the resin here and so we don't need that to happen okay
And now for a quick review, the effects of UV light on carbon fiber. With prolonged exposure to UV radiation, the chains of polymers within the epoxy will break down, causing yellowing, fading, cracking, and crumbling. While the UV light does not destroy the carbon fibers themselves, it can cause the premature degradation of sheets and panels by degrading their epoxy resin. So that is why we are going to paint this. So what's the process of painting? Basically, I'm gonna degrease the stuff as much as possible. There's different ways guys do this. I used to do it the uh, uh, anal retentive method, which was to completely disassemble everything, degrease everything, um, that was done for more aesthetic value. Uh, as an artist, I wanted to get everything perfect. But functionally, this is going to function as camouflage and to kind of protect it. So I'm just going to spray it with a rattle can. And I do not care if it dribbles even. <laughs> or if a fly lands on it, as long as the paint is covering the stuff to protect it. Plus... You know, that stuff enhances your camouflage imperfections. What is perfectly sharp and uniform in nature? Not a lot of things, right? Um, so that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to tape off stuff I don't want, obviously, painted. I can even go with the painting of this part of the bolt. Um, I'm probably going to maybe shove some... Um, stuff into the, I don't want to get the paint up in the trigger mechanism or on the trigger on, on the precision rifle as, as a Timney trigger. And I don't want to get, you know, like the safety. There's there's certain things on these Remingtons that are a little bit fussy. You don't want to mess with, right? Um, of course, the threads aren't going to get, uh, maybe I'll put this back here. Anything that's threaded, I'm going to try to, you know, plug or cover as much as I can with a um, cotton ball or whatever. I'm going to tape up the, the letters and stuff, you know, the numbers so I can read them. So this is going to be a functional execution of a paint job. This is not stylistically done. I actually use this rifle. And so we are going to do that. Rex, what's this doing on here? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. You don't, the scope doesn't say not even stand your back into it. Calm down. No, oh, you're right. Likewise with this tripod. I'm probably just going to rattle can it. I'm just going to spray it as is, man. Um, maybe, some, uh, maybe some of the numbers will be functional. Not really. Not for my application. Um, so that's what we are going to do. And if you have any questions, if you're on Patreon, of course, you find people can absolutely message me in Patreon. Um, and I will answer any questions you have on this kind of stuff. If you're in the RX classroom, I can answer detailed questions on the pointy objects because I love you because you're in the RX classroom on Patreon, okay? So stay tuned for the painting uh, uh, video and also the final uh, verdict of how it looks. I'll probably just include some pictures here. It's hard to film yourself painting without tripping over your feet, all right? Rex out.